Or whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? You said whatever the guy said. Hey, listen. Here we are. We are here once again. Episode 260 something. You feel me? This is 268? 268? 268, yeah, man. 268, 269, nice. Whatever it is to y'all. Nice. <laughs> if you listen to it twice, here it is. We are. The greatest podcast to ever live, to ever exist. We are the Pro Wrestling Breakfast Cub. With an L. Public Enemies Podcast. I am me. He is I, and I is him. Big Jizzle, the GOAT. Follow with my mans in them. Big Graham, who's doing saying saying being Red Ranger stuff and saying make sure everything is working right. You know what I'm saying? There he is. Say hello to him. Yeah, you know, he said hello. He waving. Like, he he he'll, he'll be all right. All right. Yeah, he said hi. He's go. He's go to Waco, kid. You know what I mean? In the building. Uh, even though I'm not all really the way from, from Waco, all the way from Virginia. Yo, well, ain't shit to do but cook. Yo, man, how you doing? I Joe? like like bro. Like every time, like I like we have somebody on here, and they say like Waco kid. They're like you're from Waco, and I'm like, no, I'm just a liar, man. That's that's all that is. I'm just a big liar. Yo, yo it's <laughs> a name. I'm, yo, it's a name. Thanks, bro. But bro, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, how are you? How you doing? Uh, I am faded. You know what I mean? Which is like I work the best this way. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? There's only one A in this world, in the world of wrestling, and it's this mic that I'm doing right now. So shout out to me. And right, we over here in this building, you know, you know what I mean? All right, bro. You know who else? Hey, man. Hey, man. You know hey, man. No the flips. Best faded? Hey, man. No <laughs> flips. No flips. All blicks. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the theme of this episode right now. You know right. I mean? Shout out to saying free, saying no more free cash because he's out. You know what I mean? Well, bro. But like I was saying, you talking about like being faded, and that's the best way you work. You know who else worked best faded? Bobby Brown. Yo. I need you to do some. I need you to do some Bobby Brown shit on this episode. That's what. I do. Every little step I take, you. Will. Hey, yo, listen. Remember, remember when we did Mr. Telephone Man for forty-seven minutes? <laughs> Can you imagine somebody doing Mr. Telephone Man a hundred and fifty times? <laughs> It's the oh telephone, God. man. It's a, like, oh, all right, Bobby, that's enough. That's enough, Bobby. <laughs> like, no, man, they need to know about the telephone, man. And there's something wrong with my lineup in here. Like, bro, I was out there singing that, like, uh, do it in temptations. We sing it once for once in my life. And it was like, hey, bro, you got you to gotta chill. Bro, you get one song. Like, we well, got that one song. <laughs> that's <laughs> you all know? you want to sing. Listen, man, listen, I want to do the song that I'll be doing the most on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what song that uh, Romeo did on um, Immature, but, you know, he never really did nothing. Mm, he did something. He did the ICDC College. I mean, yeah, but ICDC. But, uh, yo, man, I ain't about to do that to this man right here. You feel me? What we about to do, we got to get small package news. Cream is the building, you know what I'm saying? We over here chilling, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Small package news. What the fuck is going on in these streets, nigga? You know what I mean? All right. You know what I'm saying? New words, you know what I'm saying? That's a new that's new stuff right there. You know what I mean? I just made that up just now. Graham had to dip. He was like, I can't be part of this no more. I can't be part of this no more. Yo, it was just like, right. it was just like Tay Diggs on Brown Sugar when they heard the hoe is mine. He was like, yo, what what, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, what is going on on Brown Sugar? Bro, but, it's uh, crazy. Uh, what, what we got first on the dock of the small pack? Bro, first on the dock, you know what I'm saying? We're going to start out right now. You know what I'm saying? We got the new on Netflix coming out. Shout out to wrestlers, you know what I'm saying? Coming out on Netflix about OVW. 
know what I'm saying? Ohio Valley Wrestling for you got for you novices, you real wrestling fans that watch AEW all the time that say you know wrestling more than wrestling. Yeah, OVW. This is what this is about. OVW who produced a plenty of a legends. Yeah, like uh I think it has something to do with them like the show is based around like OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling, and like I think like the premise of it is that they're trying to do like a big show to save like the building that they're in, or it's something that it's something like that. And uh, it premieres on Netflix. Uh, let me see, September. Uh, let me look. Premieres on Netflix. Uh, September thirteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. and uh, yeah, it just follows around, you know, the wrestlers that they got over there and everything like that. And uh, I like the way that Netflix tried to hype it up and try to get interest because they were like, yeah, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Like, you know, they produced legends like Randy Orton, Dave Batista, John Cena, and like trying to like get that like, you know, I mean, an oh. extra boost on it. I appreciate that. No, I appreciate no. that. I don't appreciate that shit because <clears throat> nigga, you you already got to deal with WWE. And all these niggas work for these. They don't got no deal with WWE. Netflix don't got no deal with WWE. Oh, oh, I don't know if Netflix got to deal with WWE still. But I know they were supposed to produce some like documentaries, and we ain't seen that shit. If you if you're doing anything involving anything that has anything to do with the WWE, you have to talk to me about something. <laughs> so you could have <laughs> called. You, you think Netflix couldn't have called Brock Lesnar or John Cena's pandering ass, Big Panda Bear? Or Randy Orton. Randy Orton ain't doing nothing. He got to get the back out of me. The thing is, those men, those men that you just mentioned, they're not going to go over there unless WWE's like, hey, go over there. Especially John Cena. John Cena will stop going to his own mother's house if Vince McMahon was like, hey, bro, don't go over there no more. I heard some bad things. Like, that's that's how committed these men are to the Fed. And, right. like, I'm interested for, you know, to, to see what the documentary holds. I know they were doing some, like, I know when they had, like, the, when they were talking about Al Snow on there, they were, like, uh, former uh, pro wrestling legend Al Snow. And I'm like. Hey, man. I don't think you, like, yeah, you you didn't know about how many people had the mannequin heads <laughs> like oh, this. Bro. So he's a legend. All right. I don't think no, it was that. It, I, think it was, I think it was something else that they said in there. But, yeah, like. But yeah, yeah. Bro, can you, uh, could you imagine if you let if you let OVW and the F go? You let you you let Netflix take the OVW, and then you let animals take the F out of the WW. All right, man. Can't, can't take that, man. Can't take that. You gotta pay, you, you you gotta have to pay the piper. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gotta pay the house. You can't do nothing on OVW without having to give this man at least thirty seven dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, here you go, blood. Let me use this real quick. You heard, you heard we did the MLW over there. Don't let no makers break our foot off in your ass, too. All right, man. What, what else we got on the docket? What else? We got to get the best of all niggas. You said just to get them off our backs. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, man. Oh, guess what happened in, um, in GCW? Shoot. Shout out, you know, shout out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the all inclusive Baby Bop, you know what I'm saying? Who I don't even know, you know what I'm saying? Suki Baby Bop. You know, being in the building, <laughs> yo, for real. Shout oh, out to uh, shout out to Effie's get big gay brunch. Uh, when is the date on that? Yo, September second, the day after. You saying day after rent's due? You know what I'm saying? Get watch that big gay brunch seven. Shout out to Effie. You know what I'm saying? In yeah. in, in Shot Town in the rack. You know what I'm saying? Right next to the mo. Yeah, man. Get y'all tickets to that. Meet Baby yo. Bob. Meet. Um, Meet Barney, meet the other one, the the orange one that I can't remember his name. Meet all them motherfuckers, man. Go down there, go down there, support, show love, do all that. Yo, Baby Bob is a yo, Baby Bob held Barney down. You know what I'm saying? He was like, she was like the Bonnie to his Clyde. Nobody was listening to Barney like that. Like the girl was like, uh. so Baby, Baby Bob like, hey. wrestling. No, Barney was like, hey, clean up, clean up. They was like, shut the fuck up, nigga. To <laughs> <laughs> me, clean up, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> yo, baby, yo, baby, Bob, it's time to clean. Yo, I'm cleaning. Like, yeah, listen, we're gonna follow baby Bob because you know I'm saying this nigga Barney. I don't know. I don't really trust know, him. Bro, I, but me personally, Barney, bro, Barney Purple ain't got a uh, Randy Moss jersey on. Yo, get him out of here, man. I don't trust. Hi, right, man. Hi, hi, hi. On a more that, serious man. note, moving on uh, onto a more serious note, uh, gang. R.I.P. Terry Funk. 
Uh, earlier today, we got news that Terry Funk had passed away at the age of 79. Uh, condolences to his friends, family, and all of his loved ones, man. Like, Terry Funk, like, bro, that's a wrestler that your grandfather knew about, that your father knew about, and that you know about. Like, Terry Funk is, like, multi-generational. Like, everybody knows Terry Funk. And everybody got a grandfather or a relative that lived in Texas that knows something about a Terry Funk match that ever happened if they're a wrestling fan. You know what I'm saying? And, like, Terry Funk going, like, I was like, yo! And then, like, you know what I'm saying? Ben had to remind me, like, yo, man, he was 79 years old. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yeah, he, I'm like bro, live the full, like, like it, it's sad when stuff like this happens, obviously, you know, because he's, like, a legend. Like, he has family. He's beloved by everybody. But, like, the silver lining of this is, like, he lived a full life. You got to look at it. This man was, like, out here, 79 years old to do all of the things that he did, like, all the hardcore stuff that he did, the stuff that he did, like, back in the territory days, the stuff that he did in ECW, all of that, and still live a full life, like, into being, like, an elderly man. We have people, you know, who – that we have wrestlers who are legends, who are, like, icons – who who didn't get to see that amount of time. So the silver lining is we got to have Terry Funk for a long time. Like this man, like, like it's the running joke about him retiring so many times. Like this man literally like gave his life, gave his everything to professional wrestling, to the fans, to us. And like in that's why he came back so many times. He couldn't he couldn't put it down. Bro, he was like he was and then he was like in the world of wrestling, there's more than one royal family. Like don't 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 forget about that Funk family. You know what I mean? Like when like when the Von Erics was running around being Von Erics, and then and then the, the bum ass Freebirds being bum ass Freebirds. <laughs> it was like somebody somebody had to be the the other ultra Texas like ter- like Dory Funk Jr. Like that whole Funk family man. Like they're the they're one of the pieces of the backbone of wrestling. And then like somebody who like reinvented himself so much. It did like he's a part of so many wrestling, like wrestling, like just like moments that all wrestling fans remember, like when he got pushed off the stage, you saying by the New Age Outlaws in the thing oh, when he was chainsaw when he was chainsaw Charlie when he he got choke slam out of his shoes by me Mark Calloway, bro. <laughs> in the hell is, the hell. <laughs> yo, you, you, like yo, man was just standing away, like hey, bro, like get off of my friend. Like nah, bro. I'm gonna smack you out them Kmart shoes, bro. Yo, bro. Get out them. Get out them Air Moses. You know what I'm saying them, them them New Balances that you guys are all wearing right now that you guys really like. And and, and speaking of like uh, McFoley, like you got to look back at the legendary matches that he had with McFoley, the legendary hardcore matches with him. Uh, like it, it's so much that he leaves behind the legacy and everything like that. And uh, it was good to see like everybody acknowledging him like you couldn't like there would be like we would like wrestling wouldn't be the same today if it wasn't terry funk like yeah i can especially say that about like um like ecw and all hardcore wrestling death matches like um all of that without terry funk you don't got none of that bro you all that shit that you guys champion all the fucking all the shit that you were like oh my god the blood like Guess who started that shit? It was Big Terry. Like, yo, Terry Funk came out there with a whole stocking cap on his face with a chainsaw. Nigga. Like, <laughs> chainsaw Charlie. But that is the realest shit ever. Like, I got a chainsaw in it. Like, his waves was dipping, and he had a chainsaw. So, man, RP, man. That shit fucked me up. And I was like, yo, he was, he was 79? Like, that shit still fucked me up. Like, you thought he was going to – he's one of them dudes that you thought he was going to live forever. Because, yeah. like, he just did so much shit. Yeah, so, facts, man. Facts. But, you know, RIP to him and condolences oh, to the family, like, 100%. Uh, what we got next? But what are we doing? What was going on? Like, this is the biggest wrestling weekend ever. Ever? Did you know that? I didn't know that. Nigga, you know that, but we've been talking about this shit for weeks, dog. Hey, man. AEW. Guess what they doing this weekend? What? They're going they're going to Wembley Stadium with Serena Williams dominates at and Bret Hart. Yeah. For all in. Not Bro, a whole bunch all of, in. 
I mean, and then uh, you know what the best part about this event is? The best thing about this event is that, like how all things go with big events, shit's been fucking up, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything been fucking up, you feel me? Like, we don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know who knows what's going on, but All In has sold 80,000 plus tickets, as we've been saying. For the last three and a half weeks, maybe month and a half, but with great, with great, with great greatness comes great responsibility, and sometimes great, power, great, res- great responsibility. Hey man, niggas die. You know what I mean? And Yo, what? Just, <laughs> listen, responsibility is dying, and then like it's great sometimes. So, uh, Uncle Ben, all right, <laughs> all in. Let's go through the before we get to the prediction. You know what I'm saying why with my belt back. A um, couple things going on. Um, shout out to Ray Phoenix. We ain't got no um, picture for that, but you know what I'm saying. Shout out to Ray Phoenix. Might have some. Yeah. Um, might have some visa issues, which could yeah. affect his match going on. Oh, he's he's not having a match. They ended up like they they wrote him off. Like he's not going to be on there. He got smacked in the head by. Um, Blackpool Combat Club, he got smacked in the head with a crowbar. Damn. Uh, yeah, they wrote it off and they kind of they played it up. He got taken out by the ambulance. We also saw the return tonight of Santana and Ortiz. Oh, and, uh, heard about that. Plot twist, plot twist. They are not part of Eddie Kingston's team with uh, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon and everything like that. They went over to the Blackpool Combat Club, or at least what? it appears – that they were, I don't think, I don't know if they went over to them, but they attacked uh, Pentagon and like, it was a whole thing. Yo, man, shout out to that, man. Hey, what a swerve. Thank you, thank you, Anthony Khan. Yo, what a swerve, man. I heard they were coming back, you know what I mean? Hopefully they're on, I'm saying they're on a better talking level than they were when they left. Shout out to, shout out to Santana coming back from that knee injury. Which is always hard. So, like, yo, that's great. So they got two more people in the um in that uh, stadium stampede match. Yo, who's gonna wear? Yo, Ben, who's gonna wear the um the um Trevor Lawrence's jerseys for that uh, stadium stampede match? Yo, uh, who's in the stadium stampede match? This was the uh, Eddie Kingston and them. Eddie Kingston, Pentagon, and um and them. Okay. Well, <laughs> Blackpool get, Combat I, Club, Blackpool Combat, and and powerful. Yeah, man, that's who they are, right? That's who they are now. All right. Uh, we'll we'll workshop the name, but uh, other things that happened on the show, they did have like back and forth like interviews with like MJF and Adam Cole. Uh, they started off like earlier on in the night with MJF, and he was doing his interview with Brene Paquette, and he was just talking about you know like what this match means to him. He was talking about like if it hadn't been for you know wrestling legends that came before me, name drop a few like Stone Cold. Uh, the Rock, Triple H, Undertaker, you know, list goes on. And like he was asked about like Adam Cole and everything like that, and he was like, you know what? At the end of the day, we're brothers. Uh, you, we're still gonna be brothers after the match. And he's kind of and he's really selling it to a point where I almost feel like I don't think that he's going to make the turn. Like and uh, <laughs> like it definitely he, has to be Adam Cole, right? Bro, I think, like I said, I don't know if it's Adam Cole, and I don't know if like you offset it by making both of them do the turn. I, I just, I don't know how you would do that. But like I'm a double intrigued. clothesline, <laughs> the okay. double clothesline field turns, nigga. Like, oh shit, that would be yeah, so. I, I am intrigued. I am intrigued. Uh, but the other um, part of the interviews that they did later on in the night with Adam Cole. Uh, he did the interviews with Renee Paquette and she asked him the same questions about like MJF and everything like that. And this man got offended and he was like, nobody is turning on anybody. We're friends. Goodbye. He stormed off from the interview. Like I real toxic, like a toxic relationship. This sound real love and hip hop. <clears throat> you know was saying? We, we, we in love with each other. Y'all thought we was over. Nah, we about to go win this ROH tag team titles. That's coming up in the before all in happens. Oh, uh, all right. Big 
Yeah, like they're really playing it up. Like, uh, and uh, elsewhere, you know, in the night we had like, uh, what was it? It was Darby Allen and uh, what is the what is the name of the the guy that's that be with Darby Allen? The the Sting? <laughs> no, not Sting. <laughs> What's the nigga that even though Darby Allen on top? It was Sting, right? This is Sting. No, no. Uh, God Almighty. The, the AR? No, no. He with the mother niggas. No, not AR Fox. <laughs> the dude that got beat up by AR Fox. Nick Wayne. Shout out to G Nation. Nick Wayne. Uh, it was Nick Wayne, Darby Allen versus AR Fox and Swerve Strickland. <laughs> and got Batman on the team, nigga. They ended up like losing. Uh, uh, to Nick Wayne and Darby Allen after the match, Swerve just like tells AR Fox, he's like, "Yo, man, look, you ain't shit." He tells him, like, <laughs> out, bro, "I was really like testing you this whole time. You can't even beat an 18 year old kid." He was like, "You are not shit." Brian Cage comes out of nowhere, attacks AR Fox. Darby Allen comes out, oh, makes his save, and he's like, "You know what? You know we're always gonna be connected. You brought me into the business. You let me sleep on your couch. Like I'm always gonna be indebted to you, no matter what happens, no matter what you do." And kind of like repaired the the relationship. And I, I I don't like that because I wanted to see what else that heel AR Fox had to offer, and I feel like it was cut off at the knees, like a little too short. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I would like to see. AR Fox be like with uh with Swerve Strickland a little bit longer. Like I don't feel like it was long enough, and I also feel like you know them like going off and saying like, oh you know uh, you know there's nothing you could ever do to 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 make me mad. I'm like, bro, this man almost killed Nick Wayne, <laughs> bro. He's like he had, like he's the all flips version of all of R Anderson. Like he's your R Anderson. Like how are you gonna tell somebody like AR Fox that you're not that you said like I, I ain't never <clears> fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, said, you know how long I've been doing this shit. Like nigga, I, like that wouldn't be you if it wasn't for me. Like that's supposed to be your OG, and then the turn of your OG mm-hmm. this early. Like nigga, you just got on my team three weeks ago. <clears throat> yeah, it just, bullshit. <laughs> it just feels really weird because I'm like I would have liked to see that progress a little bit longer, but to fill in the gap of like. Uh, like uh, Swerve needed help for this match going on at All In, and like like Brian Clockwork, Cage, <laughs> Chris, no, no, he I don't think I think he trusts Brian Cage, but like Clockwork, Christian Cage, another Cage, oh, well, you know. another Cage comes down and says, you know what, Nick Wayne, your father's dead. <laughs> he, he busts that right out the gate. Like, don't let Christian find out you got any dead relatives, bro. Dog, this man yeah. will bring it up immediately. Like, he brought it up like so quick. He was like, "Man, your daddy dead too, huh?" Like, yeah, yeah I, I can see. He's like, "Yo, I can see it in you." Bro, I like a camera verse. <laughs> like, oh man, like yeah, I celebrate Christmas because your daddy is dead. Nick bro. Wayne, that you Batman? I'm like, nah, and man, your dad's dead. And he uh, basically is like, you know what? I'll step in. Edge can't come <laughs> this time. He's like, he won't um, be over know. there. I need something. I need to pay that. I mean, he didn't say that, but, you know, we're reading between the lines here. That's what, but, he, that's uh, what he was saying. Yeah. He said it. But, you know, uh, they ended up setting up the match. It'll be Christian Swerve Strickland versus Darby Allen and Sting at, I mean, uh, at All In. And they got and they got a um, – I mean, technically, they got a um, a dinosaur in their corner too. So you know, Sting ain't gonna be enough. So they got this, uh, who's gonna be the extra person hey, to uh, on Sting side? Like, I don't, well, maybe. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't like. I, I guess Sting and Nick Wayne. I, I don't know. The same face paint. I mean, you give some, give them some crow face paint. Ooh, ooh, everybody gonna have crow face paint. Same You're song. welcome, Wembley. Yo, did anything help? Anything else happen to, uh, on the on the go home show for um, Dynamite? Yeah, yeah, actually, um, some some other stuff happened. Aussie Open had a match against the Hardy Boys in the main Ooh. event of uh, Dynamite. Uh, for I think they were for the titles. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it was for the titles. It was for the titles um, in the main event and. Uh, the Aussie Open ends up retaining, and at the oh, end of the you match, say. you know, they're standing in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> like, but, uh, yeah, they're standing in the middle of the ring, and, uh, you know, you hear the uh, 
you hear the mashup music of Adam Cole and MJF, and they just like book it down to the ring. They're scrapping with Aussie Open. It's a whole big fight. And at the end of it, Adam Cole goes for a kick. He misses, and uh, MJF catches his foot. And next thing you know, like they're like doing the stare down, holding up the title to kind of like push you to that match. Like, yeah, we have to fight these guys, but we still have to fight each other. Yeah. Duh, nigga. What does that say? <laughs> well, what does that say about the titles? Like, what, what, what means more, our friendship or this title? See the dichotomy. Almost a shout out to dichotomy. That's a great word. It's a vocabulary word. You know what I mean? It, that's great. You think Aussie Open loses? That, nah, that's, I, I mean, think dude, Aussie Open retains. I think Aussie Open retains. But I think that would probably be like the catalyst to like to get them to arguing and be like, oh well, you know, if you would have been there and you would have done it right, we would have had the titles too. Like, bro, I think I think them winning the titles makes it even a better story because like now we're the champions too. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> now if we're they turn on each other, but if they turn on each other, what do we do with the titles? Like, nigga, make them be friends, nigga. Hey, listen, go over there and hold hands and run laps. See that shit in football practice growing up. You know what I mean? Listen, listen, I, I, I know y'all. Listen, you two best niggas that we got right now. So this is what we doing. What we doing? Adam we cooking, Cole. Man. We cooking. Adam Cole and MJF are gonna have to run laps together, holding hands like in football practice when you got to fight in, in um, practice <laughs> with the ROH titles to fight each other at them um, all in. They gonna have to wear the get along shirt. Hey, listen, man, put it all together. I'm saying who who will be the left arm, who will be the right arm? All flips, no blicks. All right. Uh, Let me see. Speaking of, (laughs) speaking of them, uh, FTR, uh, they did have a segment on the show against the Young Bucks. And, you know, it's the same, like, you know, I got to beat you. This is the biggest show of our career. You know, that whole thing. Like, oh, you know, we're, you know, we're. We barely thought we could get 10,000 people in a building. Now we're getting 80,000 building, blah, 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 whatever. Cut it out. Uh, the big news this week with that match is Cash Wheeler <laughs> getting yeah, arrested. Mm-hmm. Chief Cash, you know what I'm saying? Lieutenant Cash, <laughs> Kane Cash. You know what I mean? What is it? What is it? Aggravated assault? Yeah, like uh, it was um, It was a road rage incident. That's what they said like in the... <laughs> that's what they said like apparently like uh something had happened in traffic sure. and like he flashed his gun and they were uh he turned himself in off of it and they were like yo the oh. i think it was they told him like yo you got you, you can't have any firearms i don't uh after that but uh, you flash a blick on the you flash a blick on the way way and then <laughs> you turn yourself in like, what, what a good american citizen <laughs> Yo, man, you kidding me? Are you lucky? Are they in Florida? Does Cash Wheeler live in Florida? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he lives in Florida. If he's in Florida, blood, that, that, that's 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 a hello. That, that's just like putting your arm out when you have when you're on a bike and you're turning left. You know what I'm saying? Flashing the blick, like, hey, man. Florida, uh, I think July first. Uh, you you don't as of July first, you didn't have to have like a permit. To carry, bro, are you kidding me? Yeah, this happened like July twenty eighth, July 29th that weekend. So this is like a month old almost. But uh, you know, oh, he yeah. just he just turned himself <clears throat> in last oh. week. Oh, so what's up with everybody? Crazy. Salute to the chat. That means they just filed a police report um, three three days before he turned himself in. That means he got a <laughs> he got an email. It was like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Somebody somebody saw you. So no, I, I think the, the police report was filed, I think, the day after it happened. So he just wasn't going. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the champ. <laughs> like, bro, you really just, like, you really thought that no one was going to recognize you? Like, if that happened to me, I'd be like, yo, is that, is that uh, Cash Will? Like, bro, you act like you're not on national television. <laughs> but Cash Will looks like Jason Aldean. He looks like the nigga that, that works the fries at McDonald's. <laughs> like, he looks like everybody. I know 47 white people that like Cash Wheeler. They were just like, yo. Uh, so yo, he had to have the AEW championship like on his shoulder as he did it. Like, 
<laughs> they were like, oh, damn. No, that, that was a little. That was a little QT Marshall like uh, comparison. <laughs> yeah, hey, guess who I am? I'm Cash Wheeler. <laughs> what if he? Hey, what if his blood supply said I am Cash Wheeler? They was like, I think that's Cash Wheeler. Yeah. Oh, Blitz. But um, he's going to be um, free from that, right? So he doesn't even have to like. They ain't worry about that. He can. He can. He can travel to um, Wembley. So he can yeah, have he the, didn't have um, to surrender his passport or nothing. No, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I wonder why. You know, like, uh, I'm not going to take any um, hype, <laughs> take any educated guesses of why he had to do that. Shout out to yeah. um, CM Phillip. No, he put the call through, man. He was like, hey. It's a misdemeanor. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And on top of that, it's, it's, and on top of that, there's no cameras or nothing like that. So it's really hearsay. Like, I don't know how they going to prove it. She said, it's going to get props. <clears throat> he was waving a pistol at somebody. But it's definitely going to get, especially in Florida too, blood. Like I see way worse. Like, you think you tell me a state that goes through hurricane scenes is going to be worried about somebody flashing a blick on the freeway when they have to go through seventeen tolls? Like get the fuck out of here, blood. We ain't worried about that shit. No, we all good, man. We need you all out, cash. We need you. All right, uh, quick run through the rest of the show. Um, Chris Jericho and uh, why are we Will talking Ospreay about a segment? dynamite? Oh, why are we talking about that separate from the predictions? Like, no, we did we, we, we wait for you. Yeah, why we, are y'all waiting? That dynamite. For <laughs> we're not waiting for you. We're, we're just running that dynamite to run into you. I'm trying to do my segues and shit. Like, look at my man come over here, man. Y'all you know crazy. <laughs> he ain't been back ninety seconds and already he doing Bruh, it, man. I'm, been, like, I'm he's just saying. He, he got on the he on the cops cam. You know what I mean? Talk about <laughs> like, yeah. hey man, listen, y'all niggas talk about y'all niggas talk about wrestling. We'll Before talk about it wrestling? later, but yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, don't make sense. We go. <laughs> Let's, run the pred- Let's run through the predictions. Uh, Nigga, quick to lose. Want to be cool. Niggas want to be cordial and wait around. Uh, we we got an hour in. and a half. What are we waiting for? Uh, All right, <laughs> All right. Uh, pre-show. AEW. <laughs> All in pre-show. We got Aussie Open versus MJF and Adam Cole for the ROH Tag Team Championships. Who you got? See, yeah. look at y'all. Now we talking about this again. Y'all was just talking about this five minutes ago. Yeah, we're talking aye, about aye, them. Aye. I don't care about Aussie Open or Australia. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about them niggas. You know what I mean? I'm picking um, Adam Cole JF because uh, why not? Them niggas need belts. So, so they, they, like, I think Adam Cole could be like, oh, man, I'm leaving here with something. All right, what a reason. Why else? That's the, the best reason I've ever heard. Uh, give, <laughs> <laughs> give me Aussie open. Give me Aussie open. Yeah, Aussie. Oh, I'm going to say that nigga's not American, I see. <laughs> I thought this was America. <laughs> uh, you hey, know. what what Hope say? I thought this was America, people. <laughs> oh, wait. That's an uh, R. Kelly song. Yo. <laughs> Do you uh, have your shots? Sorry. Ray Phoenix. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, trios match. We got Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, and Koto Obushi versus Kenoshka K- Takeshka, Jay White, and Juice Robinson. Who y'all got? But anybody, any team that's involved in the two most expensive niggas in AEW is not gonna lose. So I'm Steve picking. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm picking Kenny Omega and um, Adam Hangman and them to beat beat the mother niggas quickly. Uh, yeah, give me give me the golden elite. Same. All right, next match. Next match, we got the AEW World Tag Team Championships. We got FTR versus the Young Bucks. <laughs> Edward in the chat talking about Graham woke up, walked in the kitchen, talking about why y'all making <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> what time was it, nigga? Breakfast for dinner. <laughs> Breakfast for dinner? <laughs> no, he's saying I came in there talking about breakfast for breakfast. Nigga, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Get talking here, about, y'all making talk, a wrestling. Y'all <laughs> talking about wrestling before wrestling, nigga? How y'all having a pre wrestling pod before wrestling pod, nigga? Nigga, <laughs> game banging on wrestling, nigga. Like, <laughs> I'm always picking the Bucks. I'm never not going to pick the Bucks. I got them winning by 742 super kicks <clears throat> between the both of them. Yeah, in in recent like things that have happened, yeah, I think that they're gonna put it on like the Bucks. 
come like John Moxley, right? You know what I'm saying? Like whenever you say whenever we need a champion to do something, we gotta put it on the Bucks. You think it'll catch his gun charge and then not and then not, not have to deal with the consequences? Like, no, nah, big dog. Give it back to the reset. Bucks. My bad. Safe reset. Uh next match. Next match we got Darby Allen and Sting versus Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. I'm sorry, Christian, your daddy is dead, Cage. My bad. I had to, I had to set the name up right. <laughs> Christian, why your dad dead? Cage. Wah, wah, wah. My <laughs> daddy. <laughs> wah, 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 my daddy. Damn. Yo, I'm picking yo, the, the third most expensive nigga in AEW, Sting, is not losing either. So I'm picking Sting and Darby Allen. You know what's crazy? It's like... They lost that match tonight, him and AR Fox, and then like you gotta lose again, even though you get like a, a veteran partner. All That's right. what I'm saying. Oh, he, like, he picked yeah. Robin. Like he had Robin on his team, and then they, like, <laughs> yeah. imagine losing to Robin and <laughs> Robin and Darby. And then yeah. like, how am I supposed to beat fucking Sting and Darby? And then like, <laughs> and then, like we lose to Robin. They, like, Yo, get off my team, man. Mm, yeah. Beating Sting and I feel like beating Sting and Darby is like beating Goku and Gohan. It's like, bro, you can't. Eat. <laughs> they when they, when they get in there and they do like the super death drop, Yo. coffin drop, whatever it is. Why do you do the coffin drop into the, uh, the scorpion? Coffin lock. drop. Yeah. Oh, like man. it's over, bro. That's like the double comedy. Yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. And then we didn't even got that, and then we lost to fucking Robin and Sting. <laughs> yeah, I'm going right, stinging them. <laughs> yeah, give me stinging them. Stinging never losing. You think he goes to a table? Yes. It's Sting, bro. We expected that. Yo, a scorpion. Yo, a scorpion death sharpshooter. With the coffin drop, might be way more menacing. So you might have to do that to swerve. Don't ever disrespect my man Sting and call it the Scorpion Death Sharpshooter. I mean, Scorpion well, you stole Death it. No, he didn't. <laughs> We've had this conversation seven times. No, he did not. <laughs> you stole that shit. Hey, man, he made it a hot line. No, nah, he did. He, he, he did steal that shit. They both stole Didn't they both yeah, steal that shit? From Cody. They both stole that shit. They both stole that shit, right? Though yeah. Sting was just the first person in America to do it. Uh, yeah, I think it was like some Japanese shit, and they yeah. was like, "That shit look cool. I'm gonna bring this shit over here." Yeah, yeah, nigga, that's fine, nigga. Let's import that bitch. <laughs> Yo, man, y'all think y'all think this nigga would mind if I did that? Yo, go over there and ask him. No, yeah, like, right, like, he said he said no. Fuck it, man. I'll do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go the other way. Yo, uh, let me see. Next on the card. Next on the card, we got. We got House the of House Black niggas versus, versus the, the ass acclaimed. Oh. Okay, all right. Whoa, oh, my bad. Yo. Sorry about that. I, I'm i going to give my resignation next week, bro. <laughs> Where did he come from? CJ, Yo, what you, sorry you, got, you got to let people talk. <laughs> my bad. I, know you don't, I know you're the host, but if he's doing the predictions, you can't talk while <laughs> he's saying what the match is because how we going to – you got to clip this up, my G. I know, and then, and then I said, and then I said, ass niggas too. First of all, you should have said that for the exact reason why you didn't even stop me. Nah, I, I liked it that part. I'm not gonna hold you. The, the house Whoa. niggas versus the ass niggas. That was cool. You feel me? Because that's what they is, right? I mean, well, they they not the ass niggas. They really not the ass niggas. It's just, I mean, I, I don't know. I live I live by the creed that you are what your daddy is. So if your daddy black, you black. You feel me? So if your daddy ass, you ass. So oh, if that's their daddy. All right, well, the rapping ass niggas, bro. Like uh he came out of retirement, like and it's really wild. Like the like 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 Terry Funk looking down from heaven, like, yo man, that's my guy right there coming out of retirement. <laughs> that's my boy right there, man. Like I said, said you can never trust when a wrestler is like, yo, put the boots in the ring, like I'm done. It's like nah, bro. <laughs> And this man tried to switch it up. He was like, yo, man, I'm badass, Billy Gunn. I'm like, nigga, that's the same thing, bro. Nah, bro. You see, he yo. didn't come out there in all pink. You feel me? Like, Cam, he came out there in a straight dad outfit with fucking polo, Wrangler jeans, and some fucking monarchs, nigga. Yeah, it looked like Mr. Drummond. <laughs> like, you Mr. Drummond or not? Like, are you, are you, are you adopted as a little? If the world don't move to the beat of just one. Yeah. And Do you? Like, uh, ooh, I am not picking anything involving. That's I'm going not with House the acclaimed. Yeah, give me the it's over. Look, the House of Black still got Alice, got uh, Malachi Black on there, spinning kick niggas on their face, right? Well, that's what I'm picking. For sure, but this ain't even. 
It was just Blix. <laughs> this ain't no Blix. This is all Blix. All Blix, no all kicks, said, no, no Blix. Yeah, no, 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 no flips, all Blix, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I'm still picking Alistair. I mean, Alistair Malachi. AM, cool. to the AM Black. <clears throat> they got a nigga named Brody on their team. Gang. Yeah, Shout out to Brody. I had a yeah. dog named Brody. Yo. No Next match on it. Yo. <laughs> Next match on the card. We got the real world heavyweight championship. Whatever the fuck that is. CM Punk <laughs> versus Samoa Joe. <laughs> the one with the black X on it, nigga. What you talking about? <laughs> That's the one that it is. You kidding me? CM Punk is never losing. No. Ever. Yeah, CM Punk. Punk. <laughs> Punk. CM Punk gotta come out to um Tay Savage face uh FaceTime too. He for sure finna uh he for sure finna do that GTS better too on Sunday for you niggas that was talking shit. Ooh, that shit was <laughs> stinky too. Man, yeah. Yeah. Man Jones sold it. He had to. Samoa Joe, a real boy. Yo, do your homework about CM Punk doing GTSs, all right? Mm-hmm. It hit different. We yeah, ain't got a mask that's, on your that's, face. That's, that's, that's what I heard. Stinky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, bro, I seen this man hit the GTS. Don't, don't, don't say that mask shit. I seen him hit the GTS in a mask when he, like, got his hair shaved off. Oh, it was yeah. just fine. For real, and he, had a whole, and he had, and he had, a, um, and he had a Festus on his team. So yeah, you're right. You talking about twelve years ago? <laughs> <laughs> when both knees was good. You feel me, yeah. nigga? Really had man strength. You feel me? <laughs> it's over with now. Man and Pepsi strength. They got <laughs> yeah, a tattoo for it. Over. Hey, just who you going with? I'm sorry, Punk. Yeah, because Punk ain't never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Punk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Punk, Punk from the rap. You know what I mean? He's yeah, man. Boy. Shout out, shout out to all my Punk Rock Beezies out there too. You feel me? Here come Pete the Snake. <laughs> He's a punk rock. She's a punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Next, Sheeta. Coming down a lot. All right, man. Can I even name the can I even name the wrestlers? I mean, damn, nigga. I just said the first person, the champion. That's all. All right, bro. You gotta all stop, right, CJ. Right. <laughs> you have to stop. AEW a- a- Women's Championship match. We got Soraya versus Sheeta versus Tony Storm versus Dr. Britt Baker DMD. Man already said his pick over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm never not going with Sheeta F baby. And he and you didn't even say I I, I I was just saying the first person. I was just saying the champion. Is yeah, that your pick, so. sir? Is that yeah. your pick? Okay, well, yeah. why don't you wait until it's time to pick? <laughs> well, that's why I, that's why I let you go first. <laughs> oh, how nice. How, 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 how generous of you. It's thoughtful, man. Real, real thoughtful. That's, 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 that's uh, real hospitality, bro. I love it. Real neighborly. Uh, shit. Let me see. Uh, hey, Jim. I want to. I want to say Soraya, mm. but okay, I'm not saying Soraya because I want her to win. Say <laughs> Soraya because she might Wrestling. win. Uh, no, <laughs> give me. Uh, shit. Give me Brent. Give me Brent. Yeah, I already knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew hey, you. Brent. I knew you. Hey, I knew you. He said Brent. Oh, hey, Brent. Oh, oh, DMD. Brent Baker Mayfield. I, I don't know if that's me or that headache talking, man. Like, what? Yeah. Bro, that's just like picking C on a multiple choice question. You can't big. go wrong with Brit. You know what I'm Yo, saying? Yo, where are the bold <laughs> predictions for all in right there? Number one with a bullet. God Graham. damn. Yo, Graham, wow. call, I, Graham calling Britt Baker a bold prediction is hilarious because that's their no, Charlotte Flair. It I'm is. just saying, bro. Like, I'm saying, like, for real, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's, yeah, nigga. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. I just don't see it happening. That's, I'll that's never die doing. by this pick. That's a <laughs> big – I mean, just – Yeah, yeah I'm going I'm to live or die by this pick. You got well, it. Shout out the factory reset. You know what I'm saying? Because that means we're really factory reset and everything. Like all the champions, all the champions go back to normal, and then we're starting over from there. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> like yo, man, wiping all this shit off the board. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So with that logic, all out, Chris Jericho wins the AEW World Title. Uh, speaking <laughs> of Chris Jericho, thanks down the line. Got Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay. Yeah, who asked for this? Nobody. 
They did. Chris Jericho asked for it. Who's they, nigga? Who is they? <laughs> Jericho and Osprey. Because the whole thing built behind this match is, oh, we couldn't have it in the Tokyo Dome. We were supposed to have it in the Tokyo Dome. Uh, lockdown happened. Now that match got put on the back burner. We could have it now. Like that's the whole thing behind this. It's like we're having it now. Well, yeah, Paymaker versus Osprey. Oh yeah, that's what you guys really wanted. Wrestling <laughs> fans who say that I don't know wrestling, we would have Paymaker versus Osprey three years ago. Like all right, bro, for sure. I'm picking Osprey because you know he's him and Jericho ain't. I think yeah. they both had a. They had a great promo on Dynamite. Um, I think this sold the match more than anything. Um, but Osprey proclaiming, like, nah, 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 dog. Like, I'm the <clears throat> best wrestler in the world. I'm better than Danielson. I'm better than the Elite. I'm better than Punk. I'm better than all y'all. I beat Okada, too. You feel me? Like, I'm not playing with none of that. You feel me? He said, my New Japan contract is up in six months. I need M's. You feel me? I need yeah, yeah. M's. You feel me? And they're going to chip him off, too. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm going with, I'm definitely going with Osprey. Latrell in the chat is saying that this is a waste of Osprey. I 100% disagree. Uh, and that is just for the simple fact of the exact promo that he cut. This, Jericho is just going to be another nigga that he could knock off his list. You know, saying yeah, Jericho is a waste Osprey. of Osprey is hilarious. Like, you know, Ooh. like you know, we talk shit about Jericho. Like you know who that is, right? Like, you know, like you know, you know he's top. Like you know he's top ten, and he's not ten of all time, Man, right? Like, I don't want to see this match. Like I'll say that for me, I don't care if he's top ten. I just don't want to see this match. Like, look, right. if you if if you can sit up here and say you don't want to see that match, but then you be like, oh my god, anything Sting does, you just like, oh my god, Jesus! Hey, did, I, did I cheer Sting? <laughs> I'm talking about them. They, the they. Oh, that I talking, talking about, about me. Y'all about to like, bro. <laughs> like the they that want to see this match in the first place. I'm, if the other day that didn't want to see this match, if you love Sting so much, how can you not love this? I'll take what? it a step further. We all see him, Punk guys. He ain't doing so hot. Hey man. <laughs> hey, whose knees you trusting better? The one, the, the one that can't jump, or the one that does a um a lion salt? I'm trusting Jericho's knees, but I'm not trusting his elbow. <laughs> All right, but, man. but that All elbow right. is about as reliable as, as Tussin. <laughs> Crazy, man. <laughs> All right, man. Give me, give me Osprey. Give me Osprey, so. Osprey. Oh, oh my yeah, God! Across the board, man. Purist. Osprey across the board. Now on hey, to the man. main event. Yeah, man. We got the main event. We got Adam Cole versus MJF for the AEW World's Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Bro, Adam Cole got a win, son. Like he got, like he got a win. I think he got a win because what is MJF doing? MJF has never been more interested as champion until Adam Cole was like, "Hey, yo, man, you want to do something?" He's like, "All right." So I didn't think he got a win. Then Adam Cole has to be a superhero, and I think that's when you see Tom's lunch <laughs> comes back, and then they they bring the undisputed Tom's lunch back. Yeah. Hmm. I. Uh... I think from what you just said, MJF has never been more interesting as a champion. That's why he wins this match. (laughs) (laughs) That town hall and like other little comments and stuff that he's been doing lately, twisting the character, like even tonight on Dynamite where they had like, uh, when they they both did the sit downs with Renee, uh, MJF had the red lighting. He was calm, cool, collected. You know what I'm saying? Adam Cole had the blue lighting, which is supposed to be cool type shit. He was off the rails. He was like, there ain't no problem with me and Max. We cool. Like, I don't know why you asking so many questions, Renee. You feel me? Like, uh, so, uh, I, I mm. think they're leaning towards something, especially also with Roderick Strong saying, I think we're going to see exactly who MJF is and we're going to see who the real Adam Cole is. Like, there's something, there's something to that and I, I Man, again, I could be wrong with the pitch that I made last week, but um, I think they should go with MJF for a baby face for a little bit. And I think this uh, as the catalyst to to kind of bring uh, Adam Cole back to, I don't want to say like where he's supposed to be positioned, but like I feel like this whole comeback is leading up to this turn in this new this new phase or whatever for Adam Cole. 
So I'm going to go with MJF to win. Yeah. What kind of baby face says better than you? I know, bro, but I'm like that, and that's that's the thing what makes it tricky for me because at the end of the year, I feel like they got to turn this back on its head and make him a heel again, and I I think that's kind of playing with fire. But I mean, I feel like that's what they're gonna do. Respect that shit. I can feel it. I can feel it. Give me, give me MJF. Minjif. So more, so more, so more months of the Burberry title, huh? That's what that's what you guys are calling for. No, I, I hate it. It's horrible. On the, on the 50th anniversary of hip hop. We're asking for another, 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 another colonizer. I'm listen, bro. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the design of the AEW title anyway. So it is what it is. It like, <laughs> yo, know, that that title belongs on a black person because all that gold and, and, and this shiny shit just belongs on a nigga. You ain't never but, seen a black person even touch that. Come within fifty yards of it. Hey, <laughs> hey, bro, what you got <laughs> over there? Don't worry about it, nigga. Yeah, we even like we even like the little one. You know what I mean? Like, yo, put this little one on you. <laughs> we can't even get a replica, nigga. You can't even get the TNT title, bro. Yeah, shit, but, white, but a white man can lose it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they man. get it back. They said, Hobbs, you can borrow this shit for three weeks, nigga. But you <laughs> should run that shit back like a library. Yo, bro, <laughs> yo put this SUW dot on. Shut up. Yo, put this SUW joint on. You know what I'm saying? We just got this one. Put it back on. Did they do that? The Jack Perry thing? Not that no, I care. no, they're doing that on collision. They're gonna do that on collision. Oh, Yo, man, you got Becky Lynch. They pushed that nigga back like an album. Oh, <laughs> damn, it's crazy. Like drill, <laughs> like like Lil Durk's album. Yeah, for sure. He was like, <laughs> yeah, nigga, don't you ever think you go drop again? Right, 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 right. You push back, hope. <laughs> Nick said, Nick said Jack Perry had to get his samples cleared. <laughs> All right, cool. Where we at? Where we at? My bad. Uh, let me see. I think next up, like, yo, that's, that's it for predictions. But uh, next up, we got a little we got a little palate cleanser. We got a question of the week. Hey, yo. Do, 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 do. We just got a letter. We hey. go read some letters. Hey. We just got the fucking letters. Hey. Wonder who it's from. Y'all. Do, do, do. You've got mail. <laughs> Blue skirt do yeah. you can too. <laughs> yeah, Magenta. Uh, <laughs> Shout out man. Magenta, man. <laughs> Shout out Magenta. <laughs> Everybody was fucking Magenta. Magenta was hard. <laughs> Yo. All right, bro. Damn, man. All right, man. John out. Cena has been scheduled to make his comeback. I liked it. I liked it. John Cena is scheduled to make his comeback uh, to WWE. Uh, the first, uh, what is it? September first. Um, right? September first. Yeah, September eighth. Yeah, on SmackDown, and uh, he will be wrestling at Superstar Spectacle in India. And we wanted to know for the question of the week: Who do you think he should face at Superstar Spectacle? Which is a wild name, like. I, I, uh, let's, let's go to the quotes first. Uh, shout out to B. Allen I. I. They said Edge. Oh, this I day. Know. I don't know. We'll talk about Edge later on. Uh, shout out to No Bad Noel. Give us one final Orton versus Cena match. Hell, have Orton come back bald headed. And he could be extra evil. I don't know if y'all know about that nigga back, <laughs> but that ain't happening. Yeah, for real, he definitely need a back. Shout out, out, shout out to back, yo, facts. Uh, shout out to at eight hundred four confidential Gunther, L.A. Knight, or Cena in a tag team match against Grayson Waller and Logan Paul. I don't think Logan Paul's showing up for that. I really yeah. He got he got other pressing matters that's coming up. Yeah, uh, yo, <laughs> facts. Uh, shout out to at Solar Munchies ninety two. Have him a tag team match against Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, and then have him cost Miz the match. Okay. Wait, so Cena's in the match with Miz? I, I no. guess I don't. No, nothing has been just, planned. Uh, don't, just this is fantasy booking for some reason. Just go ahead. Yeah, we fantasy booking over here, man. That's a question we ask. Uh, shout out to J Bodism, Grayson Waller. I think they got unfinished business and money in the bank. I think Grayson Waller as well. Uh, this one was really interesting down here. Shout out to 
Andre Winfield underscore uh, Bobby Lashley. They both need to make an appearance in ring. Been way too long. Like I, I'm, I kind of I like with that. I, you know, I like that. Mm, I like that. I ain't mad at that. Uh, shout out to Hart. Superstars Mexico sounds like a wrestling event in a cartoon. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> sounds like like on Hey Arnold when they were like, "Yo, man, we going to the wrestling extravaganza or some yeah. shit like that." Yeah, <laughs> So all of a sudden, Grandpa is a luchador. Shout out to Tishimo. Uh, kept the name this week. Kept the same name. Didn't change up. At Black Cream Soda. John Cena and LA Knight versus Grayson Waller and The Miz. Uh, read a couple more of these. Uh, shout out to CB's underscore burner, Grayson Waller. Uh at the lucky one, uh, I'm sorry. At the lucky underscore one, feel like it'll be cross. Uh, I hope not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Jakey. Uh, shout out to Psyched Heaven. They said, uh, honestly, John Cena should face Gunther. Oh, so you want this nigga to die? Okay, for sure. And that is it for question of the week. Nigga say Gunther. Who who wants John Cena to die? Do you love John Cena? <laughs> Man, say so he wanted a chest cave. Then ah, let's, I want to. I'm gonna look at the chat for a little bit. Uh, let me see who we got. We got Tony. Tony came through. Says Rio. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's go. John Cena fears Rio. <laughs> of course. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh. Let me see if it'll pull up. Shit, not working tonight. Shout out to Edward. Edward says he got to get his win back versus Austin Theory. Not even to make Austin Theory cry again because he was 100% right. He was like, bro, after you win, these people still ain't going to love you. Still going to be a bitch. And guess what? He came back 100%. Ain't nothing changed. It's only got worse. Ain't nothing changed. Damn, bro, I was just playing when I left, but damn. You know, you know, G Nation agrees. John Cena gets his win back against Austin Theory. Like, man, what else does Austin Theory have? He got to hold on to that win just a little bit. Like, You want to kick yeah. his back in even more? Like, Jesus. <laughs> uh, John Cena should face Cody Rhodes. Like, uh, Cody Rhodes said that I think that he had said that they um, that he proposed that kind of match him or something like that. I wouldn't be mad at that. But that ba- that's basically your Superman versus Captain America, right there. <laughs> he said that in like December, November, or whatever. Last time Cena was there, whatever, oh, yeah, and they like right. was hugging by the ramp, and he was ah. like, "I whispered in his ear, and I asked him if he's got one more in him. Let me have it." And he was like, "I don't know how much longer I've got." So I'm like, oh, <laughs> John Cena said, "Nah, nigga." <laughs> no, is that the is that when John Cena told him he could be a champion without the title? Damn near, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bro, think so. Some, yeah, which is like, some crazy shit. Like, bro, I've held the title as almost as much as anybody, but you don't need a title. <laughs> you feel like me? I see what, he, like I see what he's trying to say, but like, bro, that's like, nah, bro. like that's coming from the wrong messenger. <laughs> bro, yeah, John, bro, like, John Cena is never losing to Cody Rhodes as long as Cody Rhodes is making more money than him. Cody Rhodes is not making more money than him. Like, I never in life. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse you. Hey, bro. <laughs> Cody Rhodes like- is not making more money than John Cena. Not never in life. Won't be a time. I'm talking about no. like in, I'm talking about in the precipice of this company. Oh, in the precipice of this company, you think John Cena is getting paid less than Cody Rhodes? If we're gonna fight each other, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> got me fucked up, hey, bro, nigga. I am it. John Felix anthony cena you got me fucked up nigga. Well, you are a peacemaker <laughs> I don't get here, you are exactly here and lose, exactly nigga. i'm a peacemaker nigga run me the bag nigga not the one that you sent to mickey james house i'm the king of the south with a, with a, with a dog with two color eyes like, do you have a dog with two color eyes <laughs> dog old oh, damn near can't hear no more <laughs> Yo, <man. laughs> <Adrenaline>! <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. <laughs> well, what else we got on the show? Uh, 
from SmackDown this week. We had Edge. Nah, bro, CJ, talk. Plus, yeah, <laughs> down this week, though, but this nigga come back. Listen, he, he talked about more wrestling on Dynamite before that we talked about on the um thing, man. You see that shit? You see that shit? I was trying to let my man Cookie up say he the Red Ranger, but you know, like whatever. And listen, I'm gonna push this shit right again because Edge. Guess what? Edge had his last match on SmackDown last night, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting my motherfucking Sean Ross sat back. Call me Sean Ross Black. You know what I'm saying? SRB. You know what I mean? Edge had his last contract. I mean, his last contracted match on WWE, and they were talking about he's going to um, AEW, but he can't because he has a thirty day clause anyway. But he's not going anywhere because he's getting paid a whole bunch of money. Like John Cena's getting paid more than Cody Rhodes, and then he's gonna go and then he's gonna stay. So what is he gonna do? He, I don't he like, bro. Match. What what what, 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 uh, does what else does he have to prove? What else does he want to do? Like, what do you think that Edge is gonna do? Ben. PW PW Torch reported that uh, that he gave them an opportunity to re-sign him, and they couldn't meet his demands, and that he looks like you know he might be headed to AEW. Cap. But we'll we'll see on that. But at, like the the twenty fifth anniversary episode of SmackDown dedicated to him and like his whole career. I hope that he does like have this as his last match because last year he called it. He said next year, Quebec, I want to retire in, in this city in front of my friends and family. And we fast forward a year. If this was his match, like his retirement match this is a perfect send off. He got to do that. Was, man was told he'd never step foot in a ring again. Yeah. And he got to literally call his call his shot and say, this is where I want to retire, in front of his friends and family, against the guy who helped bring him back to wrestling. Like, on you. the show, on the show that he helped make famous and helped put on the map, this would be the perfect send-off and the perfect, like, walking off into the sunset. But uh, after SmackDown was over, he gave the never say never promo to kind of like oh, cover up, like if he ever, in case he ever wants to come back, do a little Saudi match, pick up a quick bag, you know, like <laughs> I, I just, I want this to be it. <clears throat> ben, Ben, you said that he said that, um, hey man, I wanted to have my last match in Toronto, Canada, but you know what he said last year? I want SummerSlam to yep. be in Toronto. <laughs> yep. And I want my last, like, if SummerSlam would have been in Toronto, I guarantee <laughs> he'd have been like, I. Right, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But uh, since, since it was in, um, it was in Detroit, I'm saying free 42 Doug. And uh, I didn't know that. But he said he was he said like, man, it would, it would show me so great sweet. if SummerSlam was in Toronto. In um, 2023, when my contract runs out, and the nigga was like, you "Hey, dickhead, like, bro, we already had <laughs> dates set. We planned this shit a year ago to be in Detroit." <laughs> well, you've been we've been planning to go to Detroit since you resigned when you came back in the Royal Rumble in 2020. Like, what was oh like? What, like you don't do this shit three years in advance, right? I thought he just <laughs> wanted a match. Oh my god, I thought he just wanted a match in Toronto. I thought that was it. I was like, oh, that's, I'm like, that's doable. You know, that's, that's, that's doable. I mean, can't we just do something at the Palace of Auburn Hills that day? And then we can just have, like, SummerSlam in the Toronto Sky Dome? Like, the Sky Dome's not there anymore, Edge. I mean, Adam. <laughs> it's not there anymore. Like, yeah. swear to God. Like, yeah, like. Uh... <laughs> I think it's very interesting that PW Torch dropped this news exclusive like three days after that whole uproar thing was, oh, this is his final match. His contract is up. He might be AEW bound. And then all of a sudden, Edge's interview drops with whoever the fuck he did the interview with. And he was like, I'm actually not clear to do anything until the end of September. Uh, I'm going to wait and get, I'm going to take this week and go home, talk to my family and see what they want me to do. So you want me to believe that PW Torch was like, Nah, we got the inside scoop. Edge was just joshing y'all, pulling y'all leg. What's really going on is he already knew the AEW deal, even though that's contract tampering. He just went in quietly and was like, yo, check this out. I mean, I'm trying to get this much. Y'all going to give me this much? And they was like, nah, we not going to give you none of that shit, nigga. Your name Adam Copeland now, nigga. And so he finna go to AEW so, so niggas could fantasy book his final match being with Christian. You know what I feel about that? 
this is my thing with that whole his final match, his final moment needs to be with Christian thing. If Edge's whole career or the majority of his career is trying to figure out how to get the masses, fuck your little uh, internet community, the masses, the millions of people that watch wrestling across the globe to see Christian on the same star level as Edge, what the fuck are we doing? Why am I wasting my time with this? You want my last moment going out to be trying to prop you up again, my nigga? What are we talking about? So is Christian going to walk off into the sunset after that? Or is he going to keep wrestling because he actually can do so? And, and like, what the fuck are we talking about, my nigga? Like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Tell PW Torch, I like Wade Keller, but tell them niggas to shut the fuck up. Yeah, Sorry. Righteous Red. <laughs> it's your right. fault. Bruh, stop. Stop. You don't even work there. Stop. Hey, bro. Hey, Hey, man. No, nah, man. He's I right. Graham's corner. <laughs> bro, I, like, no, for real. Like, how could my last moment be with him when his last moment ain't gonna be with me? When his first moment you was gonna me? be because of me. You the know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what are we talking about, nigga? Nigga, I'm edge. I'm edge. He came in as my fake twin brother. So you mean to tell me my fake twin brother gets to go on a little longer after he has his last moment with me? Like, nobody's going to put me out other than John Cena or Bro. somebody like that. Like, it's, Sorry. Like, he's I right, love, man. I, I, I love Christian as much as y'all do. Work rate and all that. Better matches. Ooh, 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 ooh. Over time, he's been. That's great and all, but he is not the star that edges. It doesn't make sense. Not that, not, not, And I'm not saying that Edge wouldn't do that. I'm not saying that Edge wouldn't do that. I'm just saying, why are y'all just making shit up in y'all head trying to, like, push these things to happen because they make sense to y'all because y'all like nostalgia and shit? Shut the and fuck then, up. And then they're going to complain about it later. <laughs> All they're going to do is complain about it later. Like, I don't even know why they even did that. Like, I don't even know why, like, and, if it was and, me. And, and that's the problem, Vaughn. Edge could exist on his own. <clears throat> Attach this Christian nigga got, to this Cut man. the feed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, look, look what Luchasaurus did. Man, man, here we go. <laughs> so I was outside with the head clippers like, man, look, cut this shit off, man. You talking about, talk about my twin too. brothers. <laughs> <laughs> talking about my twin brother, Leonardo. Yo, yeah, uh, yo cool and that. not for nothing, <laughs> like, I told my wife, I was like, they used to be, like, brothers, like, back in the day. She was like... She's like, who believed that shit? They don't look anything alike. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, black people, dear. Black people. Was blonde hair was blonde hair equals brothers. Facts. Like, yeah, they, I was like, yeah, they were brothers. She was like, oh, okay, whatever. Hey, man. They got the same glasses. If, if dreads equal brothers and you niggas look alike, it's yo, hey, fuck it. Yo, pl- yo, plenty of dreadhead bum niggas that got babies because like, so you like a dreadhead nigga that I used to know. So you're gonna get a baby. Like they they they're definitely brothers. You know what I'm saying? They got the same glasses on. Yeah, so you can't do the like the dead dad joke. Okay, all right. <laughs> that shit was fire. <laughs> that shit was yeah. fire. What's wrong with you, them, man? I heard your dad's dead. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> your dad is dead, words. <laughs> man. Hey, hey, you think? Hey, as soon as as soon as Christian find out that somebody daddy died, he immediately to the office like, I want to work with him. <laughs> oh, I want to work with that guy. I, th- I think he's I think he's got something special. <laughs> <laughs> They're like push your teeth. He was like, oh, wait, that man? Like, oh, okay. Tick tick Fuck tick. tick. <laughs> Crispy chicken, fresh lettuce, three cheeses, ranch <laughs> dressing. <laughs> It's fucking sick. I don't know what's going Where on, we at, right now. man. Where we at? I'm hot. <laughs> Yo, man. Um, Yo. Listen, there's only three pitches left. Hey, listen. I want <laughs> Yo, Graham. Yo, Graham brought up something to us that I that he wanted to talk about. That I was like, yeah, this shit sounds really good. And we're what talking I about. Talk the, about. Yo, we want to talk about. So, oh. Nakamura and Seth Rollins. Is this the best that Nakamura has looked since he's been in WWE? Even though he's won a whole ass fucking Royal Rumble? Mm, I wouldn't say the best that he's looked, but I think that uh, this is probably the the best. This is the best positioning and the best representation uh, that he's had since that that uh, Royal Rumble Mania run. 
outside of the I mean, yeah, for sure, because that Cesaro shit was stupid. Yeah. I'll say that I feel like this was his best promo. Because like the the promos in Japanese mm. hit so much harder when they're in Japanese versus him, you know, trying to like speak English and we know that's not his first language. And it's like no disrespect to him, but I like to hear this motherfucker speaking in Japanese. Like even last week, I had no clue what he was saying. And mm-hmm. I was like, Yeah, man, talk your shit, bro. Talk your shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. Yeah, fuck I'm him like, bro. And and like they brought it back with some old shit when he was like reveals like what he whispered in his ear, he says like, Oh, I know about your back. And I'm like, that's creative. And I'm like, okay, well, he's whispering that as a secret. I'm like, if you pay attention to any of the interviews that Seth Rollins has done, we all know about his back. Cause he even said it. He was like, yo, my back is fucked. <laughs> he said that like <laughs> on his interview with uh Logan Paul, he was like, Yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just fighting through it. Yo, when Nakamura kicks that nigga in his back, oh my god. When when that's the first part of the match that they have, like as soon as they're like ding ding, and he just kicks him in the back off rip, like, oh my god. You know, like in uh, Mortal Kombat, when you hit a move and like you, they do like the X-ray, and you see inside is the bone <laughs> breaking. <laughs> he's all, the, like, all his ribs and his back breaking. Like That's he's funny. Showed, he needs a backyotomy. They did that you for Shayna Baszler on Monday. I know you need a backyotomy, Seth. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I know you Facts. need a backyotomy, Seth. Facts. I don't think Nakamura's <laughs> looked any better since he's been here. Period. Point blank. I don't want to say that, that he. I don't want to say that he looks like a joke. Like he hasn't been like a joke. He's been doing whatever he wants. But like, like remember when they turned him heel and they kept him doing all that fucking weird ass shit? Like I break his arm. Like I like this is the shit. Like he, now he looks shots? like a. Yeah, I mean, listen, man. Sometimes I mean, listen, man. A win is a win. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean, and then like this is like he like this is making him look like listen like you know who the fuck I am. And then, like, Seth Rollins knows who the fuck he is. And I ain't saying that nobody's fought him, like, has to know who the fuck he is, but Seth really knows. And Seth saw that shit with his eyes when he was like, yo, I know about your back, bitch-ass nigga. And he was like, say what? And then he got kicked in his head. Like, he... Bitch. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, he was he was he was going in on Rollins with the whole the whole promo and like the subtitles really just like pulled it all together. Of course, like you know what I'm saying. Like and to what you were saying, Ben. Like I think it's like I think it's the the natural charisma, like really shines through. Like you know what I'm saying when he's able to speak in his native language because he don't have to worry about am I saying this correctly? Am I you know what I'm saying is this gonna come across right? You feel me? He could just cook. You feel me? Like that's why it's so refreshing when the timeline is always throwing up the the Oscar. This is what Oscar said in her promo when when she was going back and forth with EO and da 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 da. Them moments is always <clears throat> paramount to when they're just trying to spit out this line for line English promo yeah. with words that they're not necessarily comfortable with. And then on top of that, like how you were saying, like. He's I, I know he's in pain. You feel me? Like even when he's not in the ring, when you when you when you out walking with your wife, when you kicking it with her, when you try to pick up your baby, you in pain. He was like he he even brought up uh Seth's tat. He was like, We live by like the same code of life. And it's your tattoo. That's not even your culture, my nigga. That's my shit. You feel me? That's <laughs> like that I, bro, he was I popped that for nigga. that shit. Like he was cooking this, that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is the closest that I've seen to Shinsuke Nakamura yeah. in Japan. When now, he I don't even was know over the there, time. like, yeah, cooking <laughs> over there in Japan. And he was, like, you know, shitting on everybody. Like, when they came, when they brought him over here, like, you know, they did the thing that they do in WWE. They kind of, like, have to, like, acclimate him to their audience and kind of, like, change mm-hmm. him up. Like, water him down, so to speak. Nah, man, this was full Japan King of Strong style, like Shinsuke Nakamura, like all the way through, and I loved every second of it. But this mm-hmm. is normal shit too. Like, but like you, you really, you really gonna sit up here and have Japanese letters and, and a phrase tatted on your back, and then talk about me about you, like, <laughs> on your. Oh, you have not only do you have my language tatted on your back, you have my language tatted on your back that's already fucking injured. So, so now. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I should, I, should, I should slap you off GP. 
<laughs> Bro, I'm gonna punch. You, I'm gonna punch you in your back twice as hard just because you put it. Up. I know what that shit. I've been saying that shit since I was nine years old. And you would have put that shit on your back for real, yeah, Kobe. Man. Bro, what the hell, oh, man? Yo, I'm, man. I, by that logic, uh, Soul <laughs> Sakoa got to fold up Jake Paul. <laughs> yes, he does. Actually, and Eddie Alvarez. I'm with it. You can sell uh, me a ticket to that. Yo, sh- yo, shout out to Shinsuke, man. I hope I hope this works out for you doing something with something. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna win, but um I think that this is this is good for him as a character. It's refreshing and it's putting him back in a in a in a better position. And I think also like I don't know, maybe Shinsuke is tired of like, hey, look, can you can you go surfing right now? Is it is it finna be surfing weather in a in a month or so? <laughs> You feel me? He might be like, "Hey, nigga, get cold." You know what I mean? Feel me? He like, look, (laughs) I gotta go to work. (laughs) Let's get it. Like, you know, you know know when the spring and the summer goes down, you know, that's really start hurting niggas. Mm -hmm. Fall and winter. You see, that's what I like about that uh, that world (laughs) title. It's like if he gets it right now, like I could, like I couldn't see him taking the belt off of Roman right now. But yeah. you can imagine him taking that world title off of Seth, especially when they say, like, okay, you know, he has an injured back. You're thinking maybe they take him out, he gets to heal up, he gets a surge or whatever. Same thing like when um same thing like when he was going up against Finn Balor. Like you literally like have to like have it in the back of your mind. Like, are they gonna let him keep the title or will they like pass it off and put it on somebody? That's what I like about this. Mm-hmm. So like uh like what like Graham said, I don't think they're gonna take the title off him, but it's fun to imagine. Yeah, it's a chance. Like it's all about having a chance. Like there's like Seth is the perfect champion because there's like you could like like he could lose tonight. Especially like the way that they're building up all the little fuses he's had and shit. Like yeah. Like I know that your back hurts and then you have Japanese letters on your back, I'm gonna kick you with it. And then Finn Balor was like, <laughs> Yo, man, you took like you took my whole shoulder from me, bro. Like I'm taking your shoulder with me in the belt that you carry it on. So, um, I don't know, man. I think, the, man, WWE better put all they can into this title, I'm saying, because Roman ain't going to be going nowhere, but where he is right now, because Roman and them are going to be spinning their tires. Facts. Well, we'll talk more about that next week with Payback Producer. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what happened? NXT Heat Wave, you know what I mean? And guess what's happening on Heat Wave? Niggas. Shout out to nigga shit. Where the nigga shit at? Look at it, man. Black Star, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you guys don't sue us. You know what I mean? Please don't. Um, Haseen Bey. You know um, what? Yo, man, he's not even allowed on Twitter or any social media platform right now. He he see this <laughs> <laughs> He'll never know because he's not even allowed to log in. Like every time you log in, he'd be like, nigga, is that you? Yeah, he'd be like, all right, man, you know, I, I thought I, you know, I thought I'd try it. And I was like, nah, man, get your hey, ass out of here. Hey, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever security should be in the NXT parking lot is what's on um, that nigga's fucking Twitter shit. Because that shit, Yo, nigga, don't, don't just say nothing. <laughs> don't even say good morning, nigga. <laughs> Yo, fact, man. Uh, but yeah, man, they made history. Uh, Carmelo Hayes and Wesley, the first two black uh, wrestlers in NXT history to main event. For the world title. I mean, well, not for the world title, for the NXT title, but you know what I mean. It's a world uh, title, nigga. And I was going to put this up because I thought this stat was it. But the last time I put up a stat like this and I didn't really <laughs> know, we saw a wild moose appear and it was a whole thing. So <laughs> sometimes I just me? like, you know what? I'll let someone else say. Booker T said it on, uh, he said it on NXT. And so, yeah. like, yeah, to confirm it, like, yeah. Yeah. This was the first time. It was very special, and like they they killed it. They they killed it. You remember the time I fought me and Tiger Mask and said two animals fought each other for a world title? What you talking about that, Ben? Huh? You fucking race baiters. But uh... <laughs> when Melo did that, like reverse springboard DDT on West onto the table. I was like, oh my God, like what is going on, bro? Like they had that sequence where they was like going back and forth from the ring, doing all types of reversals and shit. I think I, I think that was the one that you posted on the Twitter too, actually. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, like, what the fuck? That they 100 percent deserve that and they deserve two more of these. Give them now. Right now. Yo, Don't give play. Two more shots. 
Yo, the the double pump kick shit, that's what got me. You know what saying? Because two niggas kicking each other in the face at the yeah, same time. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, you can tell that was like, oh, hell no, this nigga just kicked me in my face. And then yeah. they went right to, right to the Spanish fly. I was like, yo. <laughs> CJ. CJ, ah, it's man. like when uh, Goku and Vegeta face each other in the World Martial Arts Tournament and they were throwing punches at each other, caught each other <laughs> on the chin. That's exactly what I felt like. With that, like I like I liked it, and uh, they were also with the early on in the night, starting off the show. Trick Williams got to have his match against uh, Dragonoff, mm-hmm. and uh, I think Trick Williams debuted. Is that new music that he had? I believe so. Uh, it it went hard. Booker T was even on like the commentary, just like hyping it up. Like Trick Williams looks like a fucking star. Yeah. Everything that you like, everything like, if you're gonna put your creative superstar together, it's gonna be Trick Williams. Like we just seen him on the fucking um, preseason game for the Eagles with the, uh, <laughs> you know, what I mean? with the uh, Grayson Waller and um, who else was there? Drew McIntyre's bum ass was there. Well, yeah, he might have been there. Uh, uh, whoever was there with him, but yeah, Trick <laughs> Williams was the star of that name. shit. Johnny Wrestling was there. Oh yeah, shout out to, shout out to Johnny Wrestling. Niggas First, looking uh, for you, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yo, yo, hit your partner back, man. Like, like, like he texted you twice. And now he's worried. And he got signs on the shit. No, Trick Heard Williams is a star. And this was the perfect, like, this is this is the perfect match of like putting some like getting put over while losing type shit. You know what I mean? Because like it, it was it was hard hitting and there was a lot of false finishes and he kicked out of a lot of shit. Like yeah. you can tell that Dragonov gave him a lot, like Dragonov put him, like he gave him a lot. And I'm just like, oh okay. Yeah. So like that was a, that was <laughs> that was definitely a Trick Williams showcase match. Definitely a good match for him to have. Uh like you're right. Like uh, Dragonov definitely gave him a lot, made him look real good in there. Um losing effort, but definitely this one of those things, like you said, you know what I'm saying? Like getting put over in a loss, you know, uh, that this doesn't hurt him at all. Then the, but what hurt me was the conversation that he had backstage with Carmelo after bruh, like, ah, oh, man. Uh, I was man, just about you, to go there. Cause Melo was like, you know, just catching up, you know, like, you know, like he like this, this, this singles run is like harder than I thought. You feel me? But I'm gonna get it together. You feel me? It's going to be good. You feel me? It's, don't trip. You feel me? We straight. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I lost that one, but it's good. You feel me? And so Melo was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I just got to make sure I cook tonight because that whole thing with you and dragging off in the last match kind of got this asterisk over my title win. I can't have that. And Trick like, oh, so you blaming me? Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, it was innocent, though. It was innocent. It wasn't like it wasn't like aggressive. It was like, oh, so, like, like, you blaming me? Like, like, damn, like you feel, he was taken aback by it. Like, you feel me? But he was like, no, no, no. I'm just saying like. I, as for me, you feel me? Like I need to prove that I can, you feel me? Go out there, you know, this is my shit, and put plant my flag. You feel me? And so he's like, I bet that they could grab that title and looked at that title a little bit too long for my liking, buddy. Yeah, you know what I'm ah, Hunter. Yeah, get they, your boy. <laughs> they planted the seeds. They definitely planted the seeds. Like like what you said when he was like. Yo, you blaming me? And then Carmelo just kind of like pivoted off of it, and it's like, nah. It's like you know, you you know what I mean. It's like I I can't have that on there. I kind of want to beat him clean yeah. and go out there and prove <laughs> that I could do this. And like we can see, like down the road, it's definitely gonna be Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. And yeah, my heart cannot hate this. It's but it's gonna break in three pieces, and I'm gonna be so terrified. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna be a mess. I just hope they do it right. Yeah. That's it. Like, I'm upset about it. Why break niggas up? Stop breaking niggas up. I mean, at least the breakup, the breakup was like, uh, the breakup was, uh, what's the word? Yeah, amicable. You feel me? But, like, it's like how the conversations progress after that. It's like, hold on, you saying it's my fault that that shit went like that? Like, nigga, I. We just said we was cool, nigga. Why you throwing shots? <laughs> <laughs> you, that. you know what I'm saying? But nah, uh, I'm definitely excited to see where it goes. Um, and, you know, whatever the next step for, for Melo's title run is or, you know, who he's going to face at No Mercy. But, yeah, keep cooking, dog. That shit was fire. I need Melo and Wes two out of three falls. For real. Yo. Facts. Well, and uh, side note. 
What is Braun Breaker still doing in NXT? Nothing. Duh. Spinning his wheels. Being Poly D. Powerbomb. Fight Baron Corbin and Vaughn. Like I've seen that man like on there hit that spear on on Von Wagner, and I'm like, why why aren't you on the main roster, bro? Like you you don't got nothing else to do, <laughs> nigga. I'm kicking it, bro. Carry Cross could use that could use that spear right now. But you wasting it on Von. I don't know. Uh, let's see other things that happened. Tiffany Stratton uh, called out. Well, not really called out. She was talking this shit during her promo. She was like, you know, I'm the best women's champion of all time. She's like, I'm better than Charlotte Flair. I'm better than Becky Lynch. And she went through her whole promo. And, like, they're setting up a feud with her and um, Gigi Dolan. But oh, Becky Lynch was like, bro, who the fuck are you talking about? Like, I w- like, bro, I will come down there. Yo. Yo, Becky Lynch going down in NXT, all that shit's going to explode. <laughs> like, you thought was, like, NXT get a million? It's going to be like CM Punk going to collision. Like, oh, my God. You can't even understand it. Like, Roxanne's going to be the one to get that belt anyway. But uh, I want to shout out Nathan Frazier. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know who he was. Like, I wasn't familiar with your game. But apparently, you're just a loser. So, uh, shout out to you for losing. You're losing ass. <laughs> A hateful nigga. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I still don't understand how does, how, how does how does this um, NXT um, Noam Dark Cup work? Because like, so you, you just fight for three minutes, and then like, yo, if you do something, like, you got the first to two. But like, this is like a game of twenty one in wrestling. Yeah, should they be doing over in the UK? But uh, I guess I ain't carrying that trophy around, blood. Yeah. I'm tired of you making black people carry it too, Nathan. I mean, know him. So, uh, yeah, we're talking about that another time. Nah, he was, he was talking about this man. This man, welcome to the cookout. I was like, <laughs> I can hear Graham all the way over here. Cookout. Welcome to the cookout, nigga. You can't even get no plate at the gate, nigga, just because you get some fucking, you get some fucking um, color purple braids that we can fucking, <laughs> like, nah, nigga, fuck out of here. Fuck like that. Uh, Graham, Graham stands security at all cookouts, making sure that nigga ain't getting in. Like uh, you making sure LA Knight ain't getting in. Nah, nah, you on the list? Nah, nah. I just think it's funny that black people make all these jokes about being so inclusive about bringing white people into our culture and then be mad about the man. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Or Taylor Swift. <laughs> the fuck. Or, or, or Eminem, Melly Mel. The fuck is you doing, nigga? Oh, Cody Rhodes is not black. L.A. Knight likes hip hop. I don't give a fuck. He's not invited to nobody's fucking cookout. No M. Dar can get as many braids and date as many mixed girls as he want to. I don't care, nigga. That shit is dumb, <laughs> bro. Like white people, white people like hip hop. Bro, don't, bro, don't, don't, don't make me get on my nothing. foundational black man shit, bro. Like I don't want right to have now. to be the I don't want to have to be the nigga to start doing this, spewing some whole tap shit on this fucking podcast. Bro, nigga, bro, we got a minute. For, we got a minute forty left from our deadline. All right, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, if, if they can like hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Then, like, if we if we like country music or rock music, that that'll make bro. us more white than it is. Like, okay, just, listen, we're, we're not a, we're not invited to the shindig or the hoedown. Uh, all, right. all right, man. I'm just not right, trying man. to see it, bro. <laughs> I'm just not just like just like you don't want to see a Chris Jericho match. I don't want to see black people trying to invite white people to black people shit. I don't give a fuck if it's a joke. Joke about something else. It's hella other funny shit in the world. Yo, talk about these nuts, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) That's not a good joke either. (laughs) We we have we have uh, a minute and two seconds left. So uh why do y'all stretch? He is I and I is him. Nigga said that Ooh, I like over. that. Slim with the tilted brim on 20 inch rims. You know what I mean? <laughs> so check this out. You're welcome, y'all. You guys don't yeah. deserve nothing, but here he is. Graham is back. Graham came back halfway in. You know what I'm saying? Like Ray for Austin <laughs> coming to the um, to, to the Rucker game. You know what I mean? <laughs> so shout out to him. Shout out to Ben. Shout out to me because I'm the one saying this shit. I am me. At yeah, that's me. Yeah, underscore. That's underscore me. Underscore. Follow the Patreon. Follow the fucking Facebook group. Follow the fucking everything that has our names on it. There's a link tree. And uh, yeah, Yo. there's Waco kids. Say something. He's not from Waco, though. 
Yo, I'm not. Yo, <laughs> yo, just like uh, CJ said, you can follow us across all social media platforms at the enemies PE3. If you go to the Twitter, you click on the link tree and we'll show you everything that we got going on everywhere that we're at. Uh, tapping with the Patreon. Tapping with the Patreon. We got some good shit going on over there. Uh, you can follow me personally. <laughs> Shut up, Graham. You can follow me personally at underscore the son of Mars underscore on face. Uh, see, you got me fucked up. Our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> I'm close it out, Graham. Yeah, man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Kev on stage was like, "Are you from Texas?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, yeah. it's like him. It was uh, Alex Kane. It was uh, EJ and Duca. It was like, "Yo, man, I got." It was like, "Yo, you like, from Waco? Yo, I, I know right, some niggas right, in Waco." Right, I'm like, right, right. "No, bro." Like I'm like, am I the only nigga that's ever that watched Blazing Saddles is. in my no. entire life, bro? I'm tired of explaining myself. <laughs> Anyways, man. Hey, public enemy number one, check it in. You feel me? I was here and then I had to dip and then I was late. But now nah, I was I was late last week. They charged me fifty cents, but I was here on time this week, so they couldn't charge me, even though I had to slide. You feel me? And Ben the corner real quick. But I'm back. You feel me? We knocked the business out. You feel me? Me and Ben, two man power tripping on Sunday, all in motherfucking post show. Come kick it with the niggas, you feel me? Hey, yo, I don't know why niggas is in the chat talking about where the white women at. Okay, so with that said, make Whoa. sure you follow. Hey, hey, hey that I, is a Blazing Saddles joke. Oh, okay, cool. There we that go. is a Blazing Saddles joke. There we go. Joke. There we go. Bla- I'll ask about it afterwards. Okay, so yeah, uh, add on my guy, Graham. Beat me there, don't meet me there, and I'll holla at y'all on Sunday. You feel me? And then uh, Keeks is back on Monday. You feel me? All in post show with Jizzle and Keeks oh, yeah. on Monday. You feel me? Make sure y'all stay tapped in, stay tuned in, stay dangerous. You feel me? Because we right back at you next. And like, take care of yourselves and each other, but uh, send us money. Deuces. Bro, Blueface got stabbed. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> All I ask is when you lay your head on that pill at night, No, I gave you everything I had. You did. I gave you everything I had.